The person in this picture is called Chen Rong. He used to be a senior software engineer for Microsoft for over 10 years and was part of the original team that created the .NET operating system. When that project ended in 1999, he left Microsoft in the year of 2000 to start Elastos as the world's first internet-based operating system. In 2003, he was received by Jing Tao Hu, the former CPC General Secretary, and in 2013, Foxconn made a 200 million RMB investment in the Elastos operating system. For those of you who don't know who Foxconn are, they are China's and probably the world's biggest electronic products manufacturer. They produce electronic products for the biggest international companies, example, Blackberry, iPad, iPhone, iPod, Kindle, Nintendo DS, Nokia devices, PlayStation 3 and 4, Wii U and Xbox One. At one point, it was estimated that they manufactured 40% of all consumer electronics sold worldwide. So they are a very big investor. In 2017, Sunny Feng Han and Ji Han Wu started the Bitcoin investment Elastos blockchain community and founded what is known today as G3 with Bitmain, NEO and Elastos. You guys all know who NEO is. Bitmain is currently the world's largest maker of mining chips. In 2017 as well, the Elastos blockchain community also received a global digital token investment worth 600 million RMB. So guys, Elastos is not a new project. It is a project that has been in the making for 18 years and has huge industrial attention and financial backing. It is a novel technology that has only recently in the last couple of years been integrated with blockchain technology to solve some of the problems with security and asset value that it couldn't solve by itself. We're going to cover all of this tech and more. My name is Dan and welcome to another episode of CryptoLite. If you would like to learn more about Elastos, Keep watching this video. As written in their white paper, Elastos aims to create a new kind of internet powered by blockchain. The new internet will be called the Elastos Smart Web or the Internet of Wealth. The main difference with this new internet from the current internet is that the current internet is a web of information. So if you click on the URL, it directs you to a website. Elasto Smart Web though will be a web of apps. So when you click on the URL, instead of going to a website, you will go to an app. Now, how does it achieve this? It achieves this by being an internet-based operating system. Now, when we talk about operating systems, we generally think of Microsoft Windows, Apple iOS, or Linux. These are the major operating systems that PCs run on, and programs or apps are built on these operating systems. The blockchain equivalent of an operating system would be a blockchain platform or protocol. For example, projects like Ethereum, NEO, Cardano, where dApps will be built on those um, blockchains. The problem with all of these operating systems is that they are apps themselves, which means they have to be present for you to open your app. If you don't have an operating system, you cannot open an app. Almost every electronic device then is dependent on a few major operating systems to be used. It is an extremely centralized process. Furthermore, there are also a lot of limitations with using apps on the mainstream platforms, example, the ownership of digital assets. If I was to give you an example, consider this. When you buy an ebook and you download it to Kindle, do you really own that ebook or does Amazon own the ebook and allow you just to read a copy of it? If you really own the book, you should be able to sell it just the way if you own a physical book, you will be able to sell that physical book. That's the proof of ownership. So the ownership of digital assets is a major current uh, problem in operating systems and the current internet. Elastos is an operating system that is built based on the internet, meaning that as long as you have the internet, you have access to the app from anywhere in the world. It is also a peer-to-peer -peer network, so there is no centralized control and no unnecessary middleman between the app and the user. The entire platform is open source, meaning that anyone can build an app on it, just like anyone can create a website on the internet. It is also designed to use blockchain technology to establish ownership of digital assets and to create an economy of wealth. That is why it is also called the Internet of Wealth. 
There are four pillars to the Elastos project. The Elastos blockchain, Elastos runtime, Elastos carrier, and Elastos SDK. If you understand these four pillars, you understand the Elastos project. So let's try and take a look at these pillars. The current blockchains are designed to record transactions, not to store data. There is simply not enough space on the current blockchain to store a large quantity of digital movies and books. Blockchains are made also for consensus-based record keeping. They are not made to be a processor for large complicated applications. This is why there is the issue of scalability because blockchain in its very design is never designed for these things, is not designed for the way that people are using it these days. The problem as well with the usage of blockchain technology currently is that it's a parallel process with legacy systems. So for example, if I'm running a blockchain-based app on my cell phone, it doesn't matter how powerful my cell phone is, it cannot speed up Ethereum's computation. But vice versa, it doesn't matter how secure Ethereum is as a network, it cannot extend its security features to my cell phone. This is because the technology is not integrated. It is not integrated because smart contracts are designed to run on the blockchain exclusively. To address this problem, Elastos proposes to adopt a flexible main chain and side chain blockchain design. So the main chain is only responsible for the very basic transactions and transfer payments, whereas the side chains, which are the actual dApps or apps, execute smart contracts to support various applications and services. So side chains are the bits that do the heavy work. What this means is that the dApps that are built on Elastos will have the benefits of having blockchain technology built into the actual dApp, but as a dApp, they don't need to run on the blockchain platform. This is different from every every other blockchain platform project like Ethereum, NEO, etc. Okay? The apps will be running not on the blockchain but on an internet-based operating system which is known as the Elastos OS, OS which runs on Android, iOS or any other PC system. So this is an interoperability solution which I have never seen in any other blockchain project yet when you think about it, it makes so much sense. Now the Elastos OS, which is the internet-based operating system, has a core component that is known as the Elastos Runtime. Elastos Runtime is a three-in-one technology. It is the security of the system, it is also the virtual machine and also the SDK or software development kit. The virtual machine and the SDK are basically the parts of the whole technology which allows the depths from the blockchain to integrate into other mainstream operating system. The security layer is what keeps the Elasto smart web safe for malware and viruses on the internet. So if the current internet is completely infected with viruses and malware, etc. So consider this, right? If I have 500 dApps running on the Elastos OS, rather than having to install or check 500 antivirus and anti-malware software for every single dApp, I simply am building a super security system into the runtime which acts as the middleman between every interaction between the internet and the devs. Elastos will also be working with Neo and Ontology to create a digital asset identity. This means that every asset on the smart web, on the Elastos web, will have an identity and also a limited quantity. So for example, if it's an ebook, it's not an unlimited number of copies as you have on Amazon, there will be limited copies. And the limited copies creates demand and gives each asset a value. And this asset is then in control of the owner who can decide to sell it or do whatever he or she sees fit. For those of you who want to know how the ID system is achieved, do check out our ontology video because the ID system in the Elastos ecosystem is really driven by ontology and the, on, the technical details of ontology and how they do it is covered in our ontology review video. One more thing to mention about the Elastos blockchain is their consensus algorithm. So the main chain, not the side chains, just the main chain will be running on proof of work. Proof of work is the consensus that Bitcoin uses. The reason for using proof of work is because proof of work is the most secure consensus algorithm. Okay? It does take up electricity and has other problems. This is not a perfect consensus, but the way they circumvent this problem is by doing what they call merge mining with Bitcoin. 
which means there will be an auxiliary chain of Bitcoin. Being an auxiliary chain means that uh, you take part in terms of the consensus and you are able to tap into the energy of Bitcoin, but you don't, you're not confounded or confined by the rules of Bitcoin. Let me explain a little bit more. Not being confined by the rules of Bitcoin's consensus means that they don't need the consensus of every node for every transaction. Okay, uh, They can choose the number of nodes that they want down to as little as one node. Obviously, they won't choose one node because then it becomes a centralized process. They will choose more, but the number of nodes that they choose to work with is completely up to them. Secondly, they also tap into the excess energy on Bitcoin's proof of work. So in Bitcoin, you consider this, there's a lot of people mining for Bitcoin, but out of the thousands and thousands who are mining for Bitcoin over the next few minutes, really only one or two will find a Bitcoin. So the rest of the energy is wasted. So this is where they kind of piggyback onto the Bitcoin's uh, excess energy and use the excess um, computing energy to run the Elasto system. Okay, so it's very smart. It's basically making full use of Bitcoin's additional computing resources. It doesn't use any or it doesn't generate any additional electricity use because it's already using whatever Bitcoin is using. So it's environmentally friendly. At the same time, it doesn't have the limitation of Bitcoin's consensus and it's really independent of Bitcoin, which means if Bitcoin was to die one day, they can just continue and start their own proof of work. So it's a very nicely done project. Also remember that only the main chain uses proof of work. In this case, the majority of the work on the blockchain is not done by the actual main chain, the blockchain, it's actually done by the side chain. So it's the side chains that will have their own consensus um, algorithm and each one can use their own. They can use uh, proof of stake, DPoS, anything. They can use whatever they want. And the main chain is really responsible only for the very basic transactions and transfer payments only. They also have what is known as the Elastos Carrier. Now, when you put all the above features that we've talked about before and you put all of it together, what you end up is basically with a uh, decentralized internet. So just as you might have your own service provider in your own country, like Singtel or Telstra or Optus, these are the providers that are providing you the internet, Elasto Smart Web will also need a service provider and that service provider is called uh, Elastos Carrier. Elastos Carrier is a decentralized way of providing the internet. So it's a decentralized model where each user of the smart web is basically considered a node. And as a node, you can choose to contribute, okay, uh, processing power, bandwidth, storage, everything uh, to the Elastos web. And you will help to do the work of creating decentralized domain names, decentralized storage, etc. So for those of you who are familiar with the Substratum project, which is basically an app to create a decentralized way of using the current internet, the Elastos carrier is very similar to Substratum, except rather than trying to improve the use of the current internet, is consolidating the processing powers of all the users to create a new internet. Okay, so the scope of this project is simply huge and really quite mind-blowing the more I think about it. Okay, And like any other decentralized project, should the user choose to lend his processing power, he will be remunerated with Elastos token. The Elastos token is the native token which will be used for trading and investing in digital assets as well as payment of blockchain fees. There will ever only be 33 million tokens in existence. Now, the circulating supply of any token of any project uh, is basically the sum of the tokens that are active. That means the sum of the tokens that have been seen actively traded on the market in, let's say, the last year or two. Um, sometimes with crypto, coins get lost, meaning if a user loses his wallet, the cryptocurrency in that wallet is lost and removed from the circulating supply forever. So in such a case, over time, the circulating supply can actually decrease despite the fact that is actually not supposed to. So to counter this, because Elastos is an economy, they need the circulating supply to remain relatively stable. It can't keep decreasing over the years. So to keep it stable, there will be an annual 4% inflation or rather 4% increase in the circulating supply every year. Again, this 4% increase is not meant to dilute the currency. It's meant to provide stability to the current circulating supply. The total currency will always be kept at 33 million tokens and there's actually a very small number of tokens in the crypto space where you have projects that are boasting 1 billion, 50 billion, even 100 billion tokens. 
The current circulating supply of Elastos is only 5.1 million tokens. And to put things in perspective, Bitcoin, who has a 17 million circulating supply, so three times circulating supply, has a token value of $8,645, whereas Elastos is currently only sitting at $48. So if you think that Bitcoin is a too big a coin in comparison, consider Ethereum. Ethereum has a 99 million circulating supply, so that is 20 times higher than Elastos, but its current token value is worth 719. So 20 times means that uh, the token price should be, is 20 times diluted, it should be 20 times less. But despite that, Ethereum's current token price is worth 719, whilst Elastos is only worth $48. Now the question we need to ask is, Elastos as a project, can it ever catch up to Ethereum or Bitcoin in terms of market cap? And the answer is yes, I think so. You know, In terms of its project scope and use case, it's so much bigger than Bitcoin or Ethereum. So even though its market cap is currently just under 250 million, which is not much, if you were to think in terms of 5 years, 10 years from now, I definitely see Elastos catching up to where Ethereum or Bitcoin is today. And that we'll be talking about 50 to 100x gains easily. Now, Elastos had a token lock-in and return plan earlier this February, which unfortunately, if you were like me and you didn't really know of Elastos at that point, you would have missed out on the token lock. The token lock was a scheme that allowed holders to stake their tokens for up to 3 years with 4%, 5% and 6% returns each year. You could also withdraw your tokens at any point, but why would you want to? For those who missed this, there is something we can look forward to which is known as sugar dividends. The details of the sugar dividends is not released in full yet, but it has been confirmed that uh, the holders of the Elastos tokens will be airdropped with all future coins from the Elastos ecosystem. So any project that wants to join the Elastos ecosystem basically have to lock or hand over 4 to 5% of their total token uh, supply. So that's quite a bit. And that amount, a portion of that amount will be distributed to existing Elastos uh, token holders by means of airdrop. The actual numbers and the way it's going to be done is uh, still to be confirmed. All right, now I'm going to spend the rest of this video talking to you about why I think Elastos has a huge potential both in the short term and the long term. The first is about exchanges. Okay, Since Elastos hit the market in February until now, they are really only sold on two exchanges, which is Huobi and BSEX. 90% okay? uh, of their volume is being traded on Huobi. And the reason why they are not listed on bigger or more exchanges at the moment is because their SPV or Simplified Payment Verification is still currently in development and they need that to be completed before they can integrate with exchanges. So this is a, a snippet that's taken from a recent Reddit post where it was confirmed that their CMO or their Chief Marketing Officer Fei recently told the community that they have come to an agreement with seven new exchanges and are now simply waiting for the SPV to be finished to in be integrated and listed on them. So potentially in the next month, they could be listed on seven exchanges because the SPV is due to be completed by the end of May. So I saw this and I thought, my goodness, this is potentially massive. And I actually signed up for an account with UOB today just for this reason. Now, if anyone else is thinking of signing up for UOB, please feel free to use my new registration link below. The second reason I'm quite bullish on this project is because of their advisors. They have a stellar team of advisors, which includes Da Hongfei, the CEO of NIO, Ji Han Wu, the CEO of Bitmain, and then there's also Xue Yong Gu, who is a professor at Tsinghua University, one of the top universities in China, and dean of the iCenter International Exchange. There's also Jing Heng Zhao, who is the advisor and member of the academic committee for the Alibaba Research Institute and more. The, another reason why I'm very um, bullish about them, and this is probably the biggest reason, is actually about potential partnerships. 
Now we know that they are already uh, part of G3, which is a partnership with Bitmain and NEO, but they and they also have a massive investor in Foxconn. But other potential partnerships that may be coming up very soon include Huawei, the telecom giant, who invited Elastos to vi uh, sorry, who visited Elastos in April, and in that visit they actually stated that they were considering future partnerships with them. So it's not a airy fairy speculation. This is a very real partnership that may happen, and Huawei is simply huge. Also, Alibaba, the giant, invited Elastos to their headquarters last year to exchange ideas about tech. So this is a partnership that everyone is expecting will happen some point in the future. There's also commercial airline industry, so Huafu Enterprise Holdings Limited and Far Eastern Air Transport, FAT, invited Chen Rong, the founder of Elastos, for a two-day visit to discuss the future corporations of the three parties last month, just in April. Also, the Shanghai Automobile Group, the largest automobile manufacturer in China, commissioned the Elastos tech team to implement Elastos applications in the in-vehicle central control system from now on. And this is our all you know, the potential future partnerships. It excludes the list of their current partnerships, which include um, companies like Origin Agritech and Reactor Rig Gaming and more. So this project, this Elastos project, is not fluff, guys. It is the real deal. It's cutting-edge technology, which is getting adopted by huge organizations with future massive partnerships and exchange listing. I personally think that Elastos project is going to be absolutely huge. So that's it guys, those are my thoughts on Elastos. I'm very bullish on this project. I think in the long term, 50x, 100x returns is uh, very likely for this project. As always, none of this is my professional advice. This is just my personal thoughts and opinions. So please always make sure you do your own research and make your own decision. There is one last thing I would like to talk to you guys before I end today. And it's not about the Elastos project, but it's actually about us as a channel. First of all, I just want to say the biggest thank you to everyone who has been following us, who has been liking, subscribing and commenting on our videos. It's been really encouraging for me personally to see us grow as a channel. I remember just about two and a half months ago, we were only 70 subscribers big and I was so excited when I saw 50 views on a video. So over the last two months, we've really come such a long way and it's all because of you guys. So I just want to say a big thank you to you guys. Um, the other thing that I've been thinking a lot about uh, recently is about monetizing our channel. Uh, this is something I've been thinking about for quite a while. Uh, up to this point, I haven't earned a single cent doing any of these videos and it takes about six to eight hours for me to prep and do a video. So that's quite a bit of time. I don't really mind it because I honestly personally enjoy researching and understanding these blockchain projects and I absolutely love the community that we're growing which is why I really look forward to jumping onto telegram and chatting with people but the dream for me as a content creator would be to earn enough on YouTube to research blockchain projects all day long and do these videos full-time I don't know if I'll ever get to full-time I hope so and maybe I'll hit part-time instead one day but working towards full-time is certainly a goal that I would like to work towards um, I have tried applying for YouTube monetization via advertising and this hasn't happened yet despite a few weeks of waiting and from what I understand anyways is um, you don't earn that much. You earn about $2 to $10 per 1000 views and crypto content generally doesn't get that many views compared to other content on YouTube because we're not considered mainstream. So if I was to give you an example, the uh, top crypto YouTuber might uh, have about 200,000 subscribers. And whilst that might sound a lot, a top YouTube comedian would have 20 million subscribers. So, you know, uh, the percentage of viewers for crypto on YouTube is just a, a lot less. And that's simply because we are not mainstream content. And that's all right. We know that and we choose to still create crypto content because that's our interest. But what I'm trying to say, I guess, is as a very small channel currently, I don't think that the YouTube advertising, even if it does happen, which I've been waiting for almost two months for, uh, is going to help me to achieve my dream of being able to do this full time. Uh, one of our subscribers recently suggested to me that I should consider putting up a link for donations. And I've been thinking about it and I thought, why not? So starting from today, there will be a link in our description box below for any Ethereum donations should you wish to contribute to this channel and my dream of being able to do this full time. I will be super grateful for any donations. 
But please, I just want to add as well, please don't feel obliged, especially if you're joining us for the first time or you really can't afford to give any donations. I understand and any video and content that I provide for you guys is absolutely free and it always will be. Alright guys, that's it for me today. Thank you so much for your attention and support once more. If you like this video, give us that like and if you're new to our channel and like our content, click that subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of our future content. Have a great day guys wherever you are and we will catch up with you guys again soon.